Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I'd like us to turn to the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. We're not going to read the entire passage. We'll just read verse 2, verse 3, Verse 4, that will be enough for us to start for tonight. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 to 4. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, the entire book of Malachi is a very, very, very interesting book. And if we were to have time, the context of Malachi chapter 3 that we are reading, actually, the entire context will have been the entire Malachi, the entire book itself. And when you set your mind looking at the book of Malachi from chapter 1, you will see something in the heart of God. A passion in the heart of God. A desire that God had expressed very, very passionately. For example, when you go to chapter 1, you will see God speaking about his love for the children of Israel. He said, I have loved you. I have loved you. But you say, how have you loved us? It's not Esau, your brother. Yet, I have loved Jacob. But Esau, I have hated. And I wonder why God was going to open the book of Malachi from that angle. But it dawns on my heart that there was actually no reason why Jacob should be chosen and Esau should be hated because right from inside the womb, even before they were born, God said, Esau, I hate it. And as I'm looking at several of us sitting here tonight, is there any reason you know why God chose you and did not choose the other person? Eh? 
Is it because you are much more spiritual? That's why God has preserved you. Do you know that we are all here because of the grace of God? Do you know that there are many, many people that could have been better off, but God did not bring them into the work of ministry? God did not allow them to touch his altar. But the love of God that we cannot explain, we cannot put our finger and say, this is why God has loved me. This is why God has turned his attention to me. All we can say is that I know he loves me. There was that song we used to sing, say, I don't know why. I only say, oh, how he loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. He loves me. Oh, I don't know why. I only say, yes, how he loves me. But now, Coming from the protest, God is saying, look, I've loved you. How can you say, how has God loved us? Then you see God, by the time you come to that chapter 1 verse 6, God was talking about the kind of offerings that the priests are bringing to him. And he calls it what? Polluted offerings. He said, can you go and offer such offering to your governors whether he will receive it? Why do you bring me a lame offering? The one that even your own governor will not accept. And I was saying, God, what is it? I saw a very deep desire in the hand of God that those of us that he has loved as to bring us into the ministry there is a minimum acceptable service that we must give him. There is something that we cannot fall below it and we will think that our ministry is acceptable to God. By the time it comes to chapter 2, he began again to focus on the priests. He began to talk about those of us that are in the ministry on the altar and he began to speak about the kind of men the kind of women that God would have wanted us to be as priests he said the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts but you have turned aside from the way you have caused many to stumble by your instruction you have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. And so, I make you despised and abased before the people in as much as you not keep my ways or show partiality in your instruction. Now, I found God focusing on the clergy, focusing on the priests in this book. And he was saying, look, when you bring your offerings before me, it's as if you are spreading dung on your faces. And it's as if you are making yourself unacceptable before my eyes. And God was saying, look, a priest ought to keep knowledge. People ought to go and seek knowledge, seek instruction from his mouth because he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many people to stumble by your instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi. And so I have made you also despised and abased before the people. And you know how terrible it is. For a man of God to come on the pulpit and people look lightly on him. How terrible it is that when we stand up to preach, people only laugh. Others just nod their head. 
Others, once it is time for you to come and speak, they say, what is he going to say? And they just change the gear and slip away. These things bother God because of the glorious position of ministry into which God has brought me and brought you. Hallelujah. But you see, as I'm reading, it's another thing you do. He was talking to the priest. So I found that the book of Malachi, whatever was going on in the land of Israel, God was holding the priests, the men and the women of the clergy, he was holding them responsible. And I would like to say, one reason why God is focusing on me and on you is because you are the determinant of whatever happens in the congregation. Am I correct? The spirituality of the church actually can never be higher than your own spirituality. It is the pulpit that can set the pew aflame, not the other way around. If the pulpit is on fire, the pews have no alternative than to catch fire. But if the pulpit is polluted, brothers and sisters, the congregations have become unfortunate. Now, one of the things that we are trusting God to do for us in the course of this week and I need to share that with you because we need to agree together what do we want God to achieve with us as we conclude this week. One of the things we are begging God to do is that since the revival of the church depends on you, since whether the purpose of God will progress or it will not progress depends on the man on the pulpit. We want God to prevail with us. We want God to do something that will release us into an effective ministry from here off. Do you believe that God will do that? We are trusting God to do it. I want you to know that there is so much depending on you. So much hanging on your life. So many lives will not be helped unless God has helped you. So many men will be jeopardized unless God has helped me and helped you. We are men and women standing in a very critical position over the lives of men. And sometimes you don't know that one thing you do or one thing you did not do has a multiplier effect upon several people. And wherever they go, they say, well, the pastor said this, our vicar said that, our vicar did not do this. And as I'm going through the book of Malachi, I saw that God wasn't particularly even worried about what the congregations are doing. He knows that if the priests, the sons of Levi, if they are correct, if the sons of Levi, if they are on fire, if the sons of Levi will bring an acceptable service, something will happen. I've always known and it's my very deep conviction that there is no dead church anywhere. That's why I don't agree with all those that said eh, come out from among those dead churches. I don't know any dead church anywhere. Anglican church is not dead. The Methodist church is not dead. The Baptist church is not dead. There are no dead churches anywhere, as far as I know. There can only be dead pulpits. 
You are not hearing me at all. There can only be what? Dead puppets. It is the puppet that kills the church. And it's the puppet that makes the church alive. Wherever you see a church that is vibrant, that is prayerful, and holiness of life, you see it breaking forth. It is simply because the puppet is alive. The man on puppet is a man of God. Is a man who is not just on the puppet to do a job. Is a man who is exercising the call of God on his life with fear and trembling. And whenever you see a church that used to be on fire, you see it going down. You see it becoming ordinary ceremonies. You say, oh, these members are not serious. No. Please, never you blame members for what they did not do. Never you blame them for what they did not know how to do. Hallelujah. When you go back and you look and say, why is that church going down? I can tell you without fear of contradiction. Who do you think is going down? The priests. The pulpit is going down. When the man of God comes on the pulpit, and according to Malachi, when he brings polluted offerings, when he brings ministry that is polluted, ministry that is a mixture, a mixture, a mixture of the spiritual and the natural. How many times you see men of God Instead of preaching the pure word of God, they go and bring psychology. When a man is offering polluted offerings on the altar, the ministry that is not emanating from the Holy Ghost, when the man of God because he wanted to be charismatic. He's looking for another charisma that is not from the Holy Spirit. And permit me to tell you, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm sorry to tell you that there came a time when some of our pastors and leaders, clergy, they went on the pulpit chewing something under their tongue. You would think it's leaking treble. He has collected something somewhere that as he's speaking, you would think it's an anointing. No. It's something else. There are people that have gone to study hypnotism. And they know how to use words to confuse. And God is sitting there and he said, these are polluted offerings on my altar. These are offerings that have polluted the covenant of Levi. Offerings that God cannot identify with. I'm not saying that we are not reading the Bible. Sometimes we will just take a Bible passage, very powerful Bible passage, just as a cover-up. And when we have read it, we turn to philosophies. And sometimes the philosophers we are quoting, many of them died and went to hell. Sometime. And God is saying, I need priests that can offer 
acceptable service on my altar. And as we are praying for cleric this year, I see the Holy Ghost deliberately saying, look, even if I just have few priests that we do the right thing that I could accept the offering, there will be revival very quickly. So brothers and sisters, no matter how God is going to confront me and you during this week, may God give you grace to endure it. May God give you a large heart because it is because heaven that has loved you, God that has loved you, God that has called you, God that has brought you into ministry, God that has chosen you among so many is longing to find satisfaction through your hand. My prayer is that during your tenure of ministry, God will be satisfied. Jesus will be satisfied. And the body of Christ, the church under your hand, will be edified. And in your lifetime, you will see revival. During your ministry, you will see the glory of God. Under your hand. Under your hand. Under your hand, you will see the manifestation of the power of God in reality, in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, why is God speaking? When you come to chapter 2, verse 13, he again said, and this is the second thing you do. He was talking to priests. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning because he no longer regards the offering or accept it with favor from your hand. You say, why? Why does he not accept our offering again? And see what the Holy Spirit said. He said, because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth. So again, I saw that we are us. Other church members, family life may not affect anything, even if they are misbehaving. But your own marriage, are you hearing me? Your own matrimony, your own life, your own relationship between you and your wife, God is keeping his eye there. God is saying, this man that I have loved as to extend my ministry to him, his marriage must be correct. And that when something goes wrong in your own marriage, your church is unfortunate. You are not hearing me, sir. That as you come, when they collect the offering and you are going to raise it, and you turn to the altar and you say, Oh Lord, behold the offering of your people. Before you finish, the Holy Spirit will peep. He say, Who is that man there? Is it the man whose marriage is not working well in their bedroom? What is he doing at the altar? Get out! And you will think that God has accepted. Heaven is saying, no, 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 I don't want that. As I went on reading this book, fear gripped my heart. That's so. The position of the clergy is so critical that our private life, our marital life, our personal lives, has a very critical impact on the ministry and the people that we are ministering to. So I see God, God, raising a very great, passionate cry about men and women that he has called into ministry. How they must do right. So this week, this week, brothers and sisters, as we begin to seek God's face, may I ask you please, take your call seriously. 
take the call of God on your life seriously. It's a call that came to you out of the love of God. It's a call that came to you because heaven is depending on you to do something in your generation. The generations of men are depending on your life whether they will be blessed or they will be jeopardized. But what encouraged me as I'm reading is that no matter the challenge a priest has faced, no matter the challenge that has come on our lives, I see God committed. I see his commitment and it is his commitment that I just want to conclude our charge tonight with as we pray together. Look at it. He said, but who can endure the day of his coming? Verse 2, chapter 4, verse 2, the one we read. And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Whereas that verse 2 suddenly will present and say, Ah, God is coming. The consuming fire is coming. He's going to consume everyone who is misbehaving. Who can stand the day of his visitation? But why it was the fear of judgment that verse 2 will have conveyed to me. But as I went further to verse 3, I see God. And I just want to share that with you tonight. So that as you go to sleep, I want you to see what is it that God brought you into cleric for? What is it that God allows you to come into this meeting for? I believe it was not for condemnation. I believe it was not for judgment. Look at what he said. And he shall sit verse 3. And he will sit as what? As a refiner and as a purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be what? Will be pleasing, will be acceptable to the Lord. As in the days of old and as in former years. So permit me to draw two issues quickly or three. And I'll just do it by mentioning them before you pray. Whereas nobody could abide his coming. Whereas when he comes, nobody can stand when he appears. But I found that before God will appear in judgment, before he will appear as the consuming fire, he has decided to do something. What is that? To sit on the sons of Levi. God has decided to sit on you as a refiner and as a purifier of silver and gold. He has decided to do what? To sit on our lives. And why does he want to sit on your life and on my own life? He said so that he might purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. But if I read it from the old King James, it said, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that so that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. 
Then, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. So if you ask me, brothers and sisters, why did God bring you to cleric this year? Let me not deceive you. He has brought you to sit on you. Hallelujah. How does he want to sit on our lives? As the refiner. As a goldsmith that is looking for the instrument to shine better. You will see how they will sit and they are cleansing, they are purifying. There's something God is looking for in your ministry. A pleasant ministry. A ministry that we bring to God the, the, the nostalgia of the former times. Hallelujah. God is saying, I want your offering, your ministry to become so pleasant to me as it used to be in former days when I manifested my glory. I want your ministry to, 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 to strike a chord in my heart that will bring me to respond like I used to respond in the former times. And for that to happen, I will sit on the sons of Levi. I will purge them. I will refine them as a, a purifier of silver and of gold. For me, I see that coming from all that we are coming from, right from chapter 1, chapter 2, we are coming to chapter 3. And I see the Lord saying, my first concern is to sit down upon the sons of Levi. I want to purify the sons of Levi as a refiner and purifier of silver. I want to purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then, and the word then means after that, shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Before I ask you to join me in prayer tonight, let me remind you that God has brought you here. What you are doing is wonderful, but it can be much more. Hallelujah. You have been laboring in the ministry for which people have thanked God for you. But you know, they are not the ones who appointed you. Eh? They are not the ones. Honestly speaking, church members, most of them don't know. So they cannot evaluate you. They can clap for you because they are ignorant. They can stand up and say, yes, our pastor is great because they have never seen anything better. When a man has not gone to another man's farm, he will keep boasting that there's nobody's farm like his father's farm. Am I right? But God is looking for something more. God is asking for an offering, a service, a ministry that is pleasant, that will cause him to do the kind of things he used to do in the former years. You know, in the former years, they don't make so much noise like we do. And great things happen by their hands. Am I right? But now we have loudspeakers, everybody shouting on a, on a normal Sunday like this. Oh my God. As we are going on the street, this one say hallelujah. Another one say sit down there. Another one say shout. Another one say amen. All kind of things. And our land is as terrible as anything. 
I don't know whether it bothers you that arm robbers now, they now go from house to house. And not just ordinary houses, they are now going to the houses of men of God. Why have they lost the fear of God? Because something has reduced about our ministry. So as I welcome you to this meeting, this is the plan of God. This is his heart. This is the cry in the heart of the Holy Spirit. And he said, I will sit as a purifier of silver. I will sit as a refiner. Whether it is in the area of the family that there is something that is, that is not doing well, release it to the refiner. It might be something in your private life that you have never been able to share with anybody. But these are the things that has blocked your channels. These are the things that have not allowed the power of God to freely flow. As the Lord comes to sit on our lives. Don't hide it. There may be areas that no matter how God wanted to use you. When that thing happens, everything just scatters. Even though you know that the message has scattered. But because you are a professional preacher, you still come up and you still speak. But you know that there is a reduction somewhere. Let God deal with that matter in this week. Don't go back patching up. God himself in love, he said, I want something much more from your life. I want something more pleasant. I want something that will satisfy my heart. Allow me to sit on your life. Allow me to refine you. To refine you. Allow me. As you pray with me tonight. Give God that space and say, Lord, since that's what you want to do with me. Because you, you want a, an acceptable ministry. A ministry that satisfies your heart. A ministry that gives God joy and God says, that's my servant. That's my servant. That's my beloved servant. In whom I am completely satisfied. Since that's what God wants, I want you also to tell God, Lord, don't spare anything. Don't leave anything unturned. Open every channel. And flush me through. Flush me out. I know I will come out better. By the time you are leaving on Friday, you will be going on a new pedestal of ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Something will happen to you. Your utterance will change. The authority of your ministry will change. This is why God has brought us. We have not come here to joke. And of course, there's nothing in this bush that you can be distracted about. So as you settle before God, give God that space and say, Now, Lord, sit on my life. My prize that the Holy Spirit that has already started working even before you came. And I must testify to you that I suppose that as soon as you open this new year, you will notice that God had been speaking in this manner. Eh? You will notice that God had been speaking and said, it's you, it's you I want to deal with. It's you, it's you. What you are hearing me say now is a continuation or what I think the Holy Spirit had been sent to you since the beginning of this year. Because 2011 is a new decade. Eh? I hope you know that 2010 ended something. If 11 does not elevate you, then there's a problem. If 2011 does not take you into a new decade, a new beginning, a new expression, then there's a, a big matter. 
So as we pray tonight, please join me tonight and say, Father, for this week, we don't have too much to do, but you must sit on my life. Take away anything that will hinder me from becoming what you want me to be in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. The beginning of prayer is to say, Lord, now you have brought me to a place where I cannot hide. Do your work. Sit on me. Go to any extent. But don't let me go back struggling. Set me on course. Set me a place. Whatever inconveniences may come, don't let me be distracted. Help my life from this meeting. Please, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Talk to God for yourself. Speak to the Lord deliberately tonight and say, God, have your way with me. Have your way with me. Have your way with me. I'm not going to offer anything polluted again. Oh God. Oh God. Your covenant, the covenant of Levi, into which you have called me. A covenant of fear because he feared my name. He stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and he turned many from iniquity. Lord, you must restore me unto the covenant of Levi. He turned many from iniquity. Whatever you are saying that you want to sit on my life, please sit on my life. He turned many from iniquity. But unfortunately, you see, we preach and we don't see genuine conversion again. We don't see brokenness again. We don't see conviction of sin again. Because the channels are blocked. Plead with God and say, Father, that covenant that brought me into the ministry, the covenant of Levi, restore me Purify me like, 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 like silver and gold. Sit on my life. Little, little things that will not allow you to do what you want to do in my life. Touch it, oh God. Sit on my life. From this meeting. From this meeting. I don't want repetition of all things. I am tired of just being a routine. 2011 must elevate me, must take me to the next level. Lord, help my life. Lord, help my life. Lord, sit on my life. If the matter is located in my marriage, Sit on me, O oh God. Don't let my marriage make me unfortunate. Everything that heaven must do to peel off every layer that will not allow my ministry, my life to be effective. Oh God, sit on me. 
and refine me like 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 silver thank you jesus thank you this night as we stop here oh god help us holy spirit come 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 in your power then shall the offering of judah and jerusalem be pleasant unto the lord as in the days of old and as in former years hi father Father, 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 come, come and sit on our lives. Come and do something deliberate in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kima, Kombo Koshim Barabasaila, Lura Basando Roboshiba. Cause this meeting, this cleric, this conference, cause it, oh God, to release priests. Priests, oh God, that no longer offer polluted offerings. Do something new with our lives, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know of psychology. You know of philosophies. You know of empty talks that does not carry fire. Empty messages, noise that does not convict men. Oh God, sit on my life. You have called me in mercy. You have called me in your love. Sit on my life. That my ministry might become pleasant unto you. As in the former years. Thank you father. Thank you. Thank you tonight. Oh God. Oh God. Mm. Oh God. Oh God. Nakokoroboshiri. Please Lord. Please Lord. Stand up and do a work in this place. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Even though we are saying this is just an opening charge, maybe God has already arrived to you. Maybe the Holy Spirit's already pointing and said, Look, my son, your ministry has not been pleasant has been polluted. The quality of service you give me is polluted. There's a lot of strange stuff. The noses are blocked. My spirit couldn't flow. You have been struggling. You, can, you are not able to turn many from iniquity. You have only pampered people because you've lost power with me. Are you here tonight and you are saying, Lord, I cannot argue with you. I know my life, but I'm coming to you. Sit on my life tonight. I know. Me, myself, I was tired. I'm tired. But I didn't know that unless you come as a refiner. I have tried every other thing. I tried to even listen to other preachers to see if I can copy their message. Nothing has happened. Lord, sit on my life. Those areas, those little, little things, 
Those things that even in my marriage that is not allowing you to turn your ears to me. Lord, here am I. Sit on me. Sit on me. Maybe the Holy Spirit is already working very deeply somewhere in your heart. And you wish to say, God, I don't know what is happening to someone else, but for me, tonight is already a night. And I'm saying to you, Lord, change my situation. Where are you? You might want to raise your right hand before God and say, Lord, it's me. I don't know what others are going through, but for me, your love that brought me out, that put me in ministry, has brought me to this point again. Lord, I cannot argue with you. I just want you, don't let me go from here. Change my story. Forgive my secret sin. My secret pollution. Things that has polluted my life. Lord, I'm coming to you. You might want to just come to the altar and let's pray together. You might want to say, oh God. I have not been able to turn many from iniquity because even myself, I'm a victim. Even myself, I don't know what has happened. Lord, tonight. Tonight, here am I. Here am I. You couldn't, you couldn't open up in the parish because there are people there who will just take it for granted and they, they will laugh at you and they will spoil things. But here you are. God is saying, I brought you to sit on your life. You have a lot of capacity to do great work. But this thing, Lord, here am I. Lord, let 2011 mark a different beginning for me. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Do it quickly. We are praying. Before the Lord, before the, the Lord on this altar, say, oh God, sit on my life. Put your finger on anything that has blocked the channels. Let me not go from here again onto routine. You must change my story. The pollution that has entered into my life. It may be a strange girl that came into your ministry. And since then, you have become a stammerer. Since then, your prayer life has scattered. God is saying, allow me to sit on you. God bless you. Thank you tonight. The Lord Almighty is already here. The Holy Spirit is doing something beyond us. Lord, have your way. Oh, my Lord, have your way in my life from today. There is no rest. There is no peace until the Lord has his way. I place my life in your hands. Rest secured in your plans. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, have your way. Oh, my Lord, have your way. In my life from today, there is no rest. There is no peace. Until the Lord has his way, I lay my life in your hands. Rest secured in your plans. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Have your way. Please be definite with God tonight. Be definite with God tonight. 
You can't be going around in circles anymore. You can't be offering polluted offerings on the altar anymore. You can't be bringing empty psychology. Just talking big but there's no life, no power. Tell God, sit on my life. Purify me as silver. Let's ask Reverend Pofi to please come and lead us in this prayer. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to say to God, spare your people. Before the day of judgment, he said, I will sit on, my, on the sons of Levi. I will renew my covenant with them. He walked before me in fear. He walked before me. Truth was in his mouth. And he turned many, many from iniquity. Lord, do it again. Do it again. Just plead with the Lord tonight. Ask the Lord to have his way in your life. You know it. Mention it by name. Don't generalize. Be very specific with God tonight. You know the very obstacle. You know that which is actually working against your life and working against your ministry. Be very specific tonight. Mention it. Is it immorality? Mention it by name. Mention it by name. Are you tampering with church money? Mention it by name. Unfaithfulness of any sort. Mention it by name. Mention it by name. Are you struggling for position? Mention it by name. Is your life so occupied, so filled with mundane things? Mention those things specifically to the Lord. Let the Lord ask his way in your life. That God will do something definite in your life, in my life. That the Lord will have his way in my life, in your own life. At least if others have been fooling you or if others have been deceiving you, can you continue to deceive yourself? You know what they don't know about you. Begin to round up your prayers tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, tonight we have come just as we are. Lord, we have come from different places. Lord, we have covered kilometers to be here. Father, our coming here will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Tonight you have spoken to us. Tonight you have made it plain to us. That Lord, we are the reason why the church is not revived. Tonight, Lord, you have made it abundantly clear that there is no dead church. We only have dead pulpits. We cry tonight, have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, have your way in my life. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in our homes. Father, we know that many times we fight at home, yet we appear on the pulpit as spiritual people. Lord, have your way in our families. Have your way in our families. Lord, selfishness has taken over our lives. We have become so self-centered that we think only of ourselves. Lord, we don't mind what is happening in the ministry. Please, Lord, have mercy tonight. Have mercy tonight. Have mercy tonight. The tone of the meeting this week has been set. Tonight, Lord, where the voice of man has ceased, continue to minister to us. Continue to speak, O oh Lord, until we are refined. 
Lord, continue to speak, O oh God, until we are properly washed from whatever has stained our lives, has stained our ministry. Thank you, O oh God. Even as we leave this place tonight, we are not leaving your presence. You will continue to speak to us. Father, thank you for giving us enough time, Lord, to even allow you to search our lives. Lord, please pinpoint to us other things that are not yet very clear to us. Make them very clear, Lord. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.